Hi guys, this is Nia and today I will be painting pumpkins. This was quite a recent request by Manaji who requested for an orange and white pumpkin which I was sort of unsure about in terms of the white pumpkin. So the pumpkins that I'm going to be painting today is an orange one and the other one is a white pumpkin with green spots because I think those colors will complement each other nicely. Anyway, I'm going to first start off by drawing the pumpkin shapes and I'm going to do this quickly. So pumpkins come in a variety of shapes and sizes and several colors too. So for the frame of the pumpkin, you can either draw a circle, oval, or even an elongated shape that is a little bit more angled. And within the frame, you can add an oval or a circle at the top part of the pumpkin for the stem. Now, depending where you place the stem, it will determine the angle in which you're looking at the pumpkin. The more center the position of the stem is, the more circular the shape will be, which means you're looking at the pumpkin from the top. And the more you shift it to the top means that you're looking at the pumpkin from the side. I'm going to paint them facing more or less the side later on, so that's the one that I'm going to draw out. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to draw the rib sections of the pumpkin. And to draw this, you can imagine it as like um, the contour of the shape, like how I always mention before in my fruit tutorials. Or you can also imagine it like a globe or a beach ball. But this time we want to make the ribs deeper so the lines would be curved towards the top and the bottom. Now, not all pumpkins have deep ribs, so you can adjust this according to the type you want to paint. And those sections itself also doesn't have to be equal in size, which I think will give more character to the pumpkins. For the stem, you can either draw a short one or a long one. I personally like drawing long ones and you can also draw the stem with curves. And I think that this is the fun thing about painting pumpkins. There are just so many things that you can customize. And depending on your drawing level, you can either add stripes for the texture of the stem. But what I like to do is to create a bark texture that loops around the stem for extra detail. Now I'm just going to draw out the curves for all of the pumpkins and also add different stems as an example before painting it later on. Here is an example of what the stem can look like. For the bottom of the stem, sometimes there can be a stump. And if you want to incorporate that into your painting, you can draw a larger oval base, which curves inwards to the stem. And here I'm drawing a weird shape one as an example. And you can create the stem as wavy or as curly as you want it to. You can even add some dried vines for fun. Here I'm drawing how I would go about drawing the bark texture which rotates around the stem but if this is too confusing you can also just draw lines for the texture. For the painting later on I'll be demonstrating both the types so you can follow whichever one you're comfortable with. Now I'm going to be showing you the colors that I use for this painting and because I'm going to be drawing two types of pumpkins with different colors there are going to be two groups the first one being the orange group or the warm colors and the second one is the greenish color so for the first pumpkin I'm going to be using the colors vermilion cadmium orange by Windsor Newton and permanent yellow deep and to add some details for the bark I'm going to be using sepia and then for the green group I'm going to be using the colors cobalt green sap green and permanent green all of the colors that I'm going to be using here are by Holbein, except for the cadmium orange, which is by Windsor Newton. I'm also going to be using white gouache later on for a bit of details for the second pumpkin, and the white gouache that I'm going to be using is the Windsor Newton designer gouache. Before painting for this one, I feel more comfortable drawing it out first, so I'm going to do that beforehand. 
Before drawing the ribs and stems and things like that, I always like to map out the shape first and how it would lay roughly on the size of paper that you're painting on. So at this stage, what you need to do is decide on the shape of the pumpkin or pumpkins that you want to create and how you would lay it out roughly. So the drawing can be positioned center on your page if that's what you're going for. I already have an idea of what I want to paint, which is why I'm drawing it out straight away, but if you're still undecisive about the composition that you want to paint, of course draw small thumbnails first on a scrap piece of paper and see which one you like before attempting on the watercolor paper. I'm using an HB pencil which is nice and light so I can erase it easier to make clean lines. When I draw an outline for paintings, I always erase a lot because I want the lines to be as thin and as clean as possible so I can hide it behind the paint. If this is not something you are comfortable with, I would suggest for you to draw on a scrap piece of paper then tracing it over to create cleaner lines. Tracing it is also preferable if you tend to draw with a heavy hand and you tend to put a lot of pressure in your pencil because doing that and then over erasing the paper can damage it and create dents on your paper which isn't really nice to paint on. Also when I'm outlining I try to only draw the basic outline. I want to avoid all of the details like shadows and texture because that's something that I would paint later on and if I put too much pencil marks, it's going to distract from the final painting. But this also depends on your preference, I guess. If you don't mind more of your pencil showing through, then you can try and create a different style, but that's just not what I'm comfortable with. So this is just how I usually outline my paintings. So now I'm going to start painting the pumpkins. I'm going to start with the colors Permanent Yellow Deep and also Cadmium Orange to paint the base first. And I'm leaving out a small area on the top left hand side light because I want that area to have a light reflection. Just a subtle highlight that I'm going to build later on but I just want to keep that area a bit lighter compared to the other parts of the pumpkin. I'm alternating those two colors for the base and letting it blend together so I do want the paint to be fairly wet on my brush. I'm also going to use a thicker consistency paint towards the bottom of the pumpkin to give it a little bit of variation in value. And what I realized while doing this is that my brush that I'm using was a little bit too small to cover the surface. So if you're doing this, please use a larger brush than this one. But it was kind of too late, so I just stuck with it. So I get a lot of people asking me about the brush sizes that I use in some of my videos. And the thing is with brush sizes, it only depends on the size of your painting. So as you can tell here, I'm starting to feel uncomfortable painting this because the area is a bit too large for the brush that I'm using. So I would prefer to use a larger brush. And that is the point of using different size brush. It's only if it's easier to cover the certain space and if the brush would hold enough water or not. And telling you what specific brush size I'm using sometimes is a little bit redundant unless you have the exact same brand that I do. So sometimes I kind of hesitate when people ask me that because the brush sizes vary between brands so this can be a size 2 in the brand that I'm using but if I switch to a different brand the size 2 might be much larger or much smaller than this is. So the best way to understand brush sizes and what would be suitable for your paintings is actually just by experience and you will see if a certain part of a painting is a bit too large then you will naturally switch to a larger brush and if the area is too small and you find it hard to get the detail that you want in a tiny space then you probably need to switch to a smaller brush. Anyway, getting back to the painting now, I moved on to the next step and for this I mixed in permanent yellow deep and vermilion together to create a deeper orange and I used this to layer on top of the base color to start creating the shape and volume of the pumpkin to define some of the rounded grooves. I also applied the same orange mix to the bottom of the pumpkin to offset the highlight at the top and to build on the value of the pumpkin. And as I build on the layer, I add more vermilion in the mix so I can create a darker tone and redefine the shape even more. I added some of this darker tone at the top near the stem to separate the shapes 
and I blend it towards the top at the back of the stem too to suggest the curvature of the pumpkin going inwards. I'm also going to use the same color to paint the bottom of the pumpkin and also to separate the pumpkin at the back and the front. Using the same color, I also used a dry brush technique, which means you load your brush with a decent amount of paint, then drying most of it off so the bristles are separated, and I use this to create some streaky textures for the pumpkin. Because I feel like I can't push the orange any further by adding more vermilion, I decided to add a tiny bit of sap green and mix it with vermilion to create a darker tone. And this will create a warm brown color. And again, I'm going to apply it to the ribs and the bottom of the pumpkin. Let's move on to the next pumpkin now. For the base of this pumpkin, I'm going to create a really light yellow by mixing in a tiny bit of white gouache with some permanent yellow deep. And I want to make this a very thin consistency so I can apply it lightly to the pumpkin evenly. Next, I mixed in some sap green with cobalt green and use a thin to medium consistency to paint in the area of the ribs by using a tapping motion where I create dots with the tip of my brush. I like to paint the dots closer together in the rib sections and as it spreads out slightly, I'm going to paint the dots a bit more sparse and I'm just going to apply this for the rest of the ribs. To paint the second layer of dots, I'm going to add some orange mix that I already have on my palette and mix it with the cobalt green and sap green to add a bit of warmth to the pumpkin. I like combining warm and cool tones together because I feel like it makes the painting pop out more and I'm just going to apply this on top of the green section that I've already painted before but I don't want to cover everything up. Next, I'm going to make the sap green and cobalt green mix again, but use a bit more cobalt green this time, and I also added some white gouache. And before I paint the dots, I also tap the brush to dry it slightly so the paint doesn't flow out of the bristles easily. I also decided to switch to a smaller brush this time and paint the dots. I'm going to apply this lighter green mix where the dots are starting to spread out sparsely and I use the light color because it helps give the illusion that the greens are blending into the light yellow base. Where the green dots are a bit dense and packed, especially in the rib section of the pumpkin, I find that it's looking a little bit too heavy, so I use some white gouache to paint some dots and break up that area in the ribs slightly and this will lighten the texture in terms of weight. Now that I have the basic texture, I want to build on the volume of the pumpkin and I'm going to use the same base color as before but this time I added more permanent yellow deep just so I can create a slightly darker value and I'm going to apply this at the bottom of the pumpkin while still following the curvature of the grooves. After that, I'm just going to slightly blend it so the shadow area doesn't have any edges. And to do that, I just spread out whatever paint I have left on my brush upwards. Now I'm going to balance the value and define the ribs of the pumpkin. To do that, I use the cobalt green and sap green mix, and this time I added a touch of vermilion to turn the tone slightly brown. And I'm going to apply this at the deepest section of the ribs. I'm going to smooth out some of the browns that I already applied before with a clean and damp brush and then whatever paint I pick up on my brush while doing that I'm going to spread at the bottom of the area and then smoothing it upwards. I'm also going to redefine the connection of the stem to the pumpkin and I'm just going to use the same mixture as before. I'm also going to use the same color for the orange pumpkin just to give it a pop of green since I feel like this green color complements the orange nicely. Before moving on to the stem, I'm also going to apply the same color at the bottom of the pumpkin. Now I'm going to paint the stem and for this I'm going to create a brown color by mixing in sap green, vermilion and also a touch of cobalt green. I first applied it to the large pumpkin stem and as I was applying it I felt 
like the brown was a little bit too green so I decided to add some sepia and also a bit more vermilion into the mix so the brown looks a bit warmer. Then I'm just going to apply the same mix for the other pumpkin too. For the detail of the stem, I added a touch more sepia to darken the previous mix and I switched to my smallest brush and I basically drew on the texture like how I was outlining it with pencil before but this time I'm making sure that I vary the weight of the stroke so it doesn't look too one-dimensional. Instead of creating the twist for the smaller pumpkin, I just painted a bark texture which is basically made out of lines and I paint them unevenly with different weight of strokes. After finishing these two pumpkins, I found that there wasn't enough separation between the two so I used a mixture of the sap green and vermilion again to just separate those two shapes and increase the contrasting value. Before moving on to the decorative elements, I decided to look at it as a whole again and added more dimension to anything that felt flat after the paint completely dries off because of course it always dries lighter. So I redefined the curves again here and also added a bit more shadows. I'm going to move on to the leaves now and for the leaves I'm going to color it like how I painted the maple leaves in the autumn leaf collection. I basically just use the colors permanent green, vermilion and permanent yellow deep and I alternate between those different colors. However, if you don't want to create such a colorful mix, you can also just use either one of the colors or pick two of the colors. But I like how this looks, so I'm just going to paint it this way. But for the second one, I'm just going to make it simpler by using only sepia. For the details of the leaf, I switched to my smaller brush and I just used sepia and I made sure to paint it really lightly and where the leaf isn't defining that much I just added a light outline with the same color. The painting is basically done. You can stop here but I wanted to add extra decorative elements so again I took some of the leaves that I painted for the autumn leaf collection so if you're interested you can check out the video I will link it in the description box at the end of the video and because I'm a bit tight with time I'm just going to speed this part along. I'm also going to add some small filler flowers and I just added some cadmium orange to the mix that I used for the stem Then I start placing small random brush strokes around the empty areas. Once I filled in the spaces, I changed to my small brush again and used some sepia to paint the thin branches to connect the flowers. I like having quite a bit of filler flowers because I like the softness it gives to the painting compared to the bulkiness of the pumpkin. And you can also vary the colors of the flowers if you would like to. I'm also going to add some shadow color or base color for the pumpkin and for that I used a mix of vermilion, sap green and permanent yellow deep. For the application I basically used a medium to thick consistency near the pumpkins and any object and then I continued on using a thinner consistency or just water to spread the paint downwards. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and learned something new and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!